Thank you. This is the sixth and last of this season's Royal Institution Christmas Lectures on Planets. And today our topic is planetary systems beyond the sun, beyond the one that we live in. We have in previous lectures talked about most of the other planets in the solar system, certainly from Mercury to Saturn. We've said a little about Uranus, almost nothing about Neptune and Pluto. Uh, and we've touched on asteroids and comets. Now, all of these objects, except for the comets, are in a kind of flat plane, which is also the plane that the sun rotates in. And uh, that system is called the solar system. And it's a lovely system, a star in the middle and the planets strung out like beads on a string. And we note that there are other smaller systems that look a little bit like that. The moons of Jupiter, for example, are similarly strung out in the equatorial plane of Jupiter. Likewise, the moons of Saturn. Likewise, the moons of Uranus. It looks a little bit as if whatever process it was that made the solar system made some miniature solar systems as well back four and a half or five billion years ago when the solar system was formed. And the general idea, which is mostly accepted by astronomers on how planetary systems form, is that there are great gas and dust clouds in interstellar space, and that here and there there are condensations, places where there are more matter, more gravity, material collapses while rotating, and big lumps become so hot during this collapse that they have thermonuclear reactions which convert hydrogen to helium, release energy, and that lump turns on and becomes a star. Smaller lumps formed at the same time, but not as massive, don't have high enough temperatures for thermonuclear ignition, do not shine by their own light, are dark objects shining by reflected starlight, and those are called planets. Now, if that's what it's about, there ought to be lots of planetary systems. Planetary systems would then clearly be connected with uh, stars. And so let's just spend a moment talking about the life cycle of stars. Stars are born, they live, they die, and there are an awful lot of them, as this picture reminds us. Here is a photograph of a naked eye object, the Orion Nebula. It is uh, the middle star in the sword that's hanging from the belt of Orion, who's a hunter, and uh, in that psychological projective test. But this is uh, the Orion Nebula, which is a kind of stellar nursery, a place where stars are forming recently in the last millions and or tens of millions of years. And for all we know, planets are forming rapidly here as well. Stars live for a sizable period of time. Our sun has a lifetime uh, in its present stable state of about uh, 10 billion years. And then they die. Here is the product of the old age of a star more massive than the sun, a great nebula a star which has blown its top, blown its outer atmosphere out, and we see the remains of that outer atmosphere surrounding the star, which is uh, in the middle uh, of this nebula. And there are even more colossal explosions. Uh, this one is called the Crab Nebula, and uh, it uh, is a star which blew itself up in a titanic explosion which would surely have vaporized any planets that were around it at the time. Now, the sun will not go through such titanic explosions. The sun will, some five or eight billion years from now, gradually grow, become an immense, distended, cool red star called a red giant. It will become so large that it will engulf the planets Mercury and Venus, and possibly even the Earth. But even if the Earth does not wind up inside the sun, there will be so much sun in the sky that the oceans will boil, the atmosphere will run away to space, and the Earth will be slightly 
more unpleasant than it is today. However, since that is going to happen five or eight billion years in the future, it is not our most pressing problem. Uh, and for all we know, human beings or our remote descendants will be equal to the challenges of that time. After that, the sun will slowly contract and become a hot, dense, white object called a white dwarf, which will gradually decay, cool, and become a cold, black object in space. There are many red giants and white dwarfs in the sky, and uh, here is an artist's conception of a planet in foreground, which is circling a double star, a red giant and white dwarf which go around each other and the planet going around both of them. Each object casts two shadows, one white or anti-white, one anti-red, and uh, that's a kind of different place. You would immediately know you were somewhere else if you found yourself miraculously transported to that planet. And here is another artist's view of a red giant, white dwarf, double star. Uh, and uh, there are lots of them. In fact, most of the stars in the sky are members of double or multiple star systems. So a single star like the sun is a rarity, an anomaly. And occasionally, there are double stars which are so close that they touch. And star stuff flows between them and around them. They are called contact binaries. And there are a lot of them. Now. In the immediate neighborhood of the sun, there are lots of stars, and most of them are double or multiple stars, and there are a lot of red giants and white dwarfs among them, but more stars like the sun. And I'd like to do a brief pointing out of the stars in the neighborhood of the sun. We've made a model here which shows by no means all of the stars near the sun, but at least some of them. We'll need the overhead lights down to really take a good look at this. And so that we will have no trouble identifying the sun, we've uh, made a lot of spikes on it. It's this funny looking object. Uh, the sun doesn't really look like that, but that's just so we won't lose our way in interstellar space. The nearest star system to the sun, which is here, is a triple star system right here two biggish stars and one small one. This system together is called Alpha Centauri. And the little one, uh, which circles the two big ones, is sometimes called Proxima Centauri, Proxima for near, because at certain points in its orbit, it is the nearest star to the sun. This triple system of Alpha Centauri, which you can see in the southern hemisphere, is about four and a half light years from the sun. The nearest single star to the sun is this little fellow right here. This one, I'm going to touch it and make it move. There he goes. That wobbly one is Barnard's star. And as I'll show you in a moment, it is wobbly in more ways than one. Over here is Sirius the brightest star in the sky. And over here is Tau Ceti, which is the nearest star that is more or less like the sun. And it, that's a single star. And we talked about Tau Ceti in the first lecture when I tried to imagine a constellation of the unicorn in somebody else's sky. And that's how far we had to go, almost 12 light years from the sun, in order to have the configuration, the perspective of the stars change a little. Well, the typical distances between the stars are several light years. And the galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy, is much wider across than that. It's roughly 100,000 light years in diameter. Now, see the Milky Way.